Good morning on this Thursday. Um, we are so glad to have you here. We do um, know that it is open house today um, where you get to meet your students. And so our focus today is going to be on modules and we do understand um, that there may be less people joining because of the open house that does have to take place. But please remind any of your colleagues that did not attend that we do have the recording. Um, Cole is going to put the attendance link for today. Please make sure that you sign in um, on that attendance Google form. I'm going to give you a minute or so to get that completed and then we'll get started. For those people who are currently on at this point, um, you'll see Cole continue to post that same um, attendance form. That's because once they join, they may not be able to see the actual link that we posted. So we try to repost it as more people come in. We did work yesterday on some teachers who were having issues with their courses not being on the elementary side. Um, we do not know that unless you guys let us know um, because we do a, a sync with that and try to get the courses pushed in. But if there's an error, we have to go back to that individual teacher and actually put that in. Um, we do know union. There was an issue with a lot of courses and that may be why um, you guys couldn't see what we were training. So let me remind you again, if you cannot see the exact same thing that you see on the screen during our training, please email us and let us know because um, there is an issue somewhere with your course that we are unaware of and we'll take a look at it. With that being said, we do want to say that our EC and resource, we're going to remind you again from yesterday, do not have an activity period homeroom for most of those actual courses. So you guys will make the decision, do I just leave my subjects open, which is perfectly fine because you don't have to have that hub. The hub is really just to house them and have announcements all in one place at one time. Um, or you can decide to make one of those subjects your hub, but that is totally up to you what you what you do decide. Also, um, while you're filling out your attendance, we want to make sure that we remind you of our digital teaching and learning um, YouTube channel. So if you'll please, if you have not subscribed to that, if you will do that, this does have all of the recordings. There is going to be a time when you're going to need to come back to these recordings. Um, this is how we actually learned ourselves how to um, actually do the elementary side. And um, there was nobody that really trained us. We had to go through and stop and start, write notes, see what that actually looked like on, um, on the elementary side. So with that being said, let's talk about and review a little bit what we did yesterday. Um, we went into the hub, which is our home room, and we talked about the tabs across the top. We looked at the schedule tab, the grades tab and the resources tab, where all of that is housed for our subjects. Then we broke it down into the individual subjects and what those features were. We looked at the home and how to build a page on that and link it to that actual tab. We looked at the schedule inside a particular um, subject. We looked at the grades tab as well as the resources. And we told you today that we would begin working on modules. That modules is the area where you will go in and build your content. And this is what where mostly the students will spend their time um, actually completing assignments. Um, we're going to actually work in the sandbox today, your sandbox course, which is your manual course. Um, we're going to discuss modules, how to build the different assignments. Um, how to copy from that sandbox, which is the manual course, into your individual power school subject courses, which will involve 
diving into the Google Classroom um, experience and how to push those into Canvas itself. So with that being said, we are going to move over to Lisa to um, go over that experience and then I'll be back to tackle some of the questions that we had yesterday on our Google form. Good morning, everybody. On the screen in front of you, I am on the Homeroom Hub page and I've scrolled down where you see side by side Miss Cox's grade three sandbox and to the right, it has her ELA grade three Cox section two, which is her power school subject card. Today, we're gonna to talk about modules and we are going to click into the sandbox for Miss Cox grade three. Again, today you may wanna look so, and review the recording and then do your own sandbox in a similar fashion, or you may want to follow along as we do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Miss Cox's sandbox. And we're going to take note by looking on the left side in the navigation, which are the blue words on the left side. Inside this navigation, we are going to solely concentrate on what is called modules. Modules is really where this sandbox is critical. We are here in modules where we're able to build units. And inside those units, we have assignments. We have a variety of ways we can deliver the information to our students. So we're going to start first of what a module is. Modules are that unit, that overarching umbrella, that content area, chapter, however you want to put it. But here we have a few examples on different ways you can do or set up your modules. And again, we're in a sandbox. So we are able to create, edit, design, anything and everything before we copy to our power school subject cards because remember once the content goes into the power school subject card our students can then see it okay so here on the top right we have what is called a plus module button this button creates a module and it is that light gray area that you see here where my first module that is visible to you is information. Or lower down, I have ELA grade three. I've also put in here math, science, and social studies. So for a lot of my K2 self-contained teachers, this may be a great way to have all four subject areas housed in one sandbox. I'm sure you're asking, well, how do I build that module? So we're going to go through that process first. Over at the top right, you have a plus module blue button. I'm going to click that button and a pop out box will appear. Inside this add module, this is where you can put your four different core content areas, meaning one module per content area, or you can build a sandbox per content area. So for here, you can put ELA, the grade that you are teaching, which here it's third grade, And from here, you would hit this blue button, add module. Now understand, as you add things in Canvas, in the modules area, it will populate at the bottom. 
Let's talk about things that are on that module bar right here. One, on the left side of the words, ELA grade three, you have what is called handlebars or eight dots. And you have that ability to see a little compass as I hover over it. This gives you the ability, once you left click, you can now drag this module up or down. Next, on this bar across from your words, you will see a prohibited sign. That means it is not published. It also means your students cannot see the module or the content that is inside the module. If I give a click to that prohibited sign, you should see a green check mark, which refers and means it is published where students can see the module and possibly content inside based on the green check marks below. Next, to the right, there is a plus sign. When I click that plus sign, a box should populate and it's asking what type of item to add. We will go through the different items and types of items as we continue training today. And then lastly, the three dots on the right. When you click on the three dots on the right, another pop-out tab should come up. This is what would you like to do with this module? When the pop-out box appears, you then have an option for edit, move content, move module, delete, duplicate, send to, copy to, share to commons, and common favorites. And we'll go over a few of these in just a moment. Now, today we're gonna to work in one module and that module I've labeled ELA grade three. This little arrow to the left of the words is a drop down area where you can see today's content that we are going to review. The first thing underneath inside this content is what is called an external link. You will notice it's an external link based on the little link icon sitting on the left. What I have done here today is we have put unit one traditional tales as a hyperlink to the PSRC instructional pacing guide. And this is what it looks like when I click on this link. This should look familiar to some, and those of you that are new, you will be trained accordingly as we continue. But here is the pacing guide for third grade ELA. It's specific for traditional tales, which is a part of unit one. And what I've done here is listed this here so I would always have something to refer to. Now, this green check mark means it is published. It's published for you, the teacher. However, if this was a traditional module and students would need to see things, they may not need to see this pacing guide. Therefore, I would click and unpublish. It's there for me, the teacher, but not visible to my students. Next, let's talk about a few of these icons you see next to the assignments below. One, you have assignment and online submissions which is the paper and pencil icon. The next one is just a piece of paper that is called page. 
link. This is an external URL. And this other link is an external tool, which I will go ahead and start going through the different types of assignments that you can give your students. We're going to first start with building an assignment. We are going to go over to the plus button on the far right of the module name. And when you click on the plus button, we are coming to the first section called add and the drop down that you get to choose. When you click your drop down, you are going to see assignment, which we will discuss momentarily, but we will also discuss today page, external URL, and external tool. You can find these items all within that plus button across from the title of the module. Once you go ahead into add assignment, you are going to click the words create assignment. Here you would then be able to give an assignment name and then choose the indentation. This indentation is like a tab. We recommend indent level two so that the student sees a distinct difference in different items or assignments. And like always, add item when ready. I'm going to open up the first assignment, an online submission relating to traditional tales called vocabulary exercise. So in front of you, you will see an assignment like I just showed by walking through that plus button. And over to the far right, you will need to utilize the pencil to edit an assignment if it's already been built. Now for today's purposes, I have placed what type of assignment this is. I'm going to show you in this example, assignment and online submission. However, for your students, you may have wanted to just name your assignment vocabulary exercise, however you choose. Once you have titled your assignment, scrolling down, you will see what is called a text editor. This text editor toolbar is your generic Word or Google Doc type of editor. You have your edit, view, insert, format, tools and table, and some nice icons in between. You also have three dots that shows more, where you have link, images, YouTube, documents, and then those familiar icons that we're aware. You do have some justifications such as left, center, and right, bulleting, indentation, and so on. Now down to the nuts and bolts of it all. Inside this text box is where you can place directions. You can give information, you can place links. In this area, we have what's called or how I developed it today, students, click the link and download the file below and use the annotation tool in Canvas to complete the vocabulary exercise. So I've placed the hyperlink for my vocabulary exercise here. I've typed in the words, I highlighted the words, and then came up to my three dots went to the linking button and placed the link for it to go to. 
When I click on this link, this is what will appear. Unit one, vocabulary exercise. And the reason why the selection for annotation tool in Canvas is so that the student will be able to write directly on this PDF. Now, the next parts. As I scroll down, there's more to this assignment. One, we're talking about points. How am I going to grade the points and give the points to my students? I have selected 100. I'm going to give 100 points to the student as they complete and I grade it. Display grade is as. You have choices and it is the chosen choice of selecting points. Next, submission type. This is where I have selected online. You do have other choices such as on paper or external tool at this point. By selecting online, I have the capability of selecting student annotation where you would then file upload the PDF or document and I've selected file upload in case the student chooses to do it in a different way. Next, submission attempts. This area is how many times will I allow the student to actually submit the assignment. Your choices here for submission attempts are two, unlimited or limited. Today I have chosen unlimited since if we are at the beginning of the school year and I want them to be able to complete it as many times as they can. However, as the school year continues, you may want to limit how many times the students can submit assignments. Limited would then select for you, the teacher, to give a number, how many times, three, four, five, and so on. I'm going to shift this back to unlimited. Lastly, near the bottom of the assignment page, the details. The check mark for Sync to PowerSchool is available there. Also, assign. You have the capability to assign it to everyone in the class, or if you choose to differentiate, you can assign it to select students in the class. And most important, due date. Here in the box, you have a due date, and using the icon calendar to the right will allow you to select a date. Keep in mind, due date is necessary for Power Teacher Pro. Available from and until will not necessarily work if syncing to Power Teacher Pro. We advise that you select only due. Due date with the, a date that you would like the assignment due on. And at this time, once all of this is inputted for an assignment, you would then click save. I'm going to select on my navigational blue words called modules. And at that time, you can then either click publish or select publish in the assignment as you're editing the details. You then see August 20th is my due date, which would be tomorrow and 100 points will be given based on grading that assignment. Next, page. Page is just that, a blank white page. And when I click in here, the assignments and its appropriate links will be inside for traditional tales. I'm going to click on the link to page so you can see. I will click on the edit button at the top so that I still would get 
the text editor, and the text box that goes with it. As I scroll down, you see this text box, and I type in here items I would like my students to complete. The chocolate touch vocabulary. They will click on this link, traditional stories text set vocabulary that is from my PSRC, instructional pacing guide for grade three. As well as I've listed here, a formative assessment. They will then have an activity for the Chocolate Touch chapters one and two comprehension activity, where then it is linked and they're able to jump out to a new tab and complete the information. And this is what it looks like. So here is the text set vocabulary. And here is the chocolate touch chapter comprehension questions. Notice that as I scroll down, there's no points, assignment details, submission, anything available there because it is a page. A page gives content information. This page area would also be great for the links that you may have from Google Classroom in order to put the links here for the students to access and see. It is also a great way in order to incorporate the sharing feature of Google Drive here, where they can then edit a forced copy slide, a forced copy Google Doc, in order to answer questions that you've already built inside your Google Classroom. We'll touch more tomorrow, Friday, our last session, with Google Classroom questions and concerns and how-tos. Once you're done with the page of traditional tales, which are links for these two things that I've selected, I will scroll down to the bottom and click save. To get back to modules, we'll come here on the navigation side, underneath home, and select the word modules. Next, we're going to be talking about external URL and external tool. External URL is an actual link. It is one of those items that jumps out from the link that you assign it. So when I click on the external URL called informational text, the industrial revolution, the legend of John Henry, it will open up in a tab on my browser. Now, how did I get that? How do I build it? We're going to go back to the trusty plus button at the top of our module. Here, remember, add item, dropping down to external URL. When you select it, you will copy and paste the website link, URL link, here in the URL area, and then whatever you want the link title to show for the student. Now, the next check mark is very important. There is a check mark for load in a new tab. That means it will not change the Canvas course assignment area in modules. It will jump to a new tab in my browser for them to click on. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Indentation, remember, is similar to your tabbing system. Indent 2 is the preferred indentation. Now, the assignment I've given my students is called external URL. That's for you to understand that's what we're doing. Information text, the industrial revolution, the legend of John Henry. 
and I have selected the check mark to open in a new tab. So if you look on my tabs at the top, you will see as I click on the link, it will jump me to reworks.org, where it is the Industrial Revolution, the legend of John Henry. This is where the students would then read about John Henry and such, and there would be possible vocabulary or questions or relation to social studies for that assignment. So as I navigate back, that is an external URL. Lastly, external tool. When I click here on the external tool, it will jump to what I've pushed in here as Newsala reading. And we're going to go through that process. So we're going to go back up to the plus button. Instead of add external URL, we are going to select external tool. Here, you will then see shortly different external tools that are connected to your Canvas instance. It starts off in alphabetical order, and as you scroll down, you will see YouTube, Newsilla, Schoolnet, IXL, Google Drive, Vocabulary, Edpuzzle, CK12. Today's assignment external tool, I had selected Newsilla. And when you select your blue external tool you choose to use, it will populate a URL and then you can give a page name. Again, I like the idea of opening in a new tab. So it does not take them out of the Canvas tab. It adds a new tab at the top of the browser. An indentation too is preferred. You would then click Add Item. So when I hear when I am here at external tool, my newsletter reading, I'm going to click that link, and it will jump out in a new tab once I click Load External Tool. And you'll see here. It will say, welcome, Miss Melissa. There we go. Takes a few minutes. And then from here, she would be able to click the content in which she would like seen or shown. As it's still loading, on the left side, you'll see different places of what Newsla has in there for you. It has the History Channel, Britannica, Highlights, The Guardian, many, many, many things that she can then click Next and continue on the process. Newsla is a part of K-8, so you all should have the capability to use it. Now, returning back to my navigation, Modules, all of you are probably asking, how do I get from my sandbox to my subject card? You have, it can be done two ways. One, you can take the entire module. Now, if I scroll further down, you'll see from my pacing guide, I have added links for unit two, unit three, four, five, six, seven. I've added the whole year in the sense of the links. So we're going to show you how you can move the entire module for grade ELA grade three. And then we will go ahead and show you how to move individual assignments. To move the entire module, whether you keep it open with the drop down or you close the drop down, over to the right, you have three dots. As you click on the three dots, you are looking for the words copy to. When I click the words copy to, a pop-out box will appear. I have to select the course I want to copy it to. When I click my drop down, I will see Ms. Cox's course subject areas. I am looking for ELA grade three. Now, please be mindful that you select the 2021 slash 
2022 course for ELA grade three. When I select it, it will populate in the bar and I will hit the blue words, copy. You will get a green dialog box saying copy operation started successfully. And I can then click close. You will repeat the same process if you choose to only do an assignment, a page. Okay. Now, the only thing it does not move is your external URL. And as you see in the three dots at the drop down, there is no area called copy to. And the same with external tool. You do not see a copy to area in the drop down at the three dots. If in fact you have many links that you would like the students to be able to look at and use, we highly recommend putting those links on a page. Icon is a piece of paper because when you go to those three dots, you have the capability to copy to. Okay, we are going to go back to our homeroom little house on the blue toolbar and jump into the ELA subject card. I've scrolled down so you see the ELA grade three Miss Cox. And you'll see that lovely books banner that we imported yesterday. As I click on it, I'm going to go to that navigation at the top where it says modules. And look what appears, ELA grade three and the items in which we had moved. Now you see that these links, URLs have changed over and moved over because we moved the entire module. If we are going to try to move an individual link underneath and inside a module, it will not go because there is no copy to feature. Please make sure if you want students to see your content that the green check mark is present. And you can always look to see what a student can see by utilizing the student view at the top right area. I have clicked to the student view so you can then see what they see. Now, we all know above assignment and online submissions, we had the PSRC instructional pacing guide unit one sitting there. And you see as a student, they cannot see it because it is not published. Also, there were other units underneath the Newsola reading, unit two, three, and four, and they were not published either. So you can see using student view to be very helpful to see what they can and cannot see, or to help us as teachers to know what we have published or unpublished. Now, note to self, on the bottom there are two buttons, reset the student and leave student view. I was just viewing to see what the student can see. So I'm going to leave student view and this pink, this pink area that states that we're in student view will go away. And it's going to return us back to our ELA subject card. I'm going to get ready to wrap up and turn things back over to Stephanie for the remaining of the session. Okay, to wrap up, we do know that that was a lot of information. Um, just please remember that you're going to have to go back um, and work hands on with it to completely understand everything and you're probably gonna have to pull up um, the videos later and stop and start as you um, prepare all of this and, and we're always here if you need us um, 
to support you on that. A couple of questions that were asked on our questionnaire from yesterday. Um, one is, letterland resources, will they be put into Canvas? Um, not at our level. Um, letterland does not technically have an LTI where we at the admin level can add that into Canvas. But remember, you can always add it on a page like Lisa showed you as an external link um, and then copy that over to your um, PowerSchool course. So there are ways of getting around um, not having an external link to add um, at the admin level so it shows up inside of your course. You can always, again, add it on a page and put that in to copy over because remember, as Lisa said, the external tools, when you build them, if you select that in your sandbox course to move over, if you do it singly as like an assignment drop down, it will not copy over to your PowerSchool course. Um, someone else asked about um, peer observers and what's the purpose in them. Peer observers are technically connecting the parent to the um, student grades and assignments. Um, for instance, um, my daughter being at the high school level, I connected as a peer and I was able to see um, her grades, assignments, anything that was missing, I could see that. Um, so it's very similar, our K2 people, to what you had as guardian in Google Classroom. They cannot get into your classroom. They cannot see the other students in the classroom. It's technically just connecting associating themselves with their student um, that they have at home. Now, a question was asked also about like resource teachers and AIG teachers um, having the capability if they added a um, student to a, a subject that they have on their dashboard, would it, even though they teach um, middle school and elementary level, would it still show up on, for example, the second graders um, page as a subject? And the answer to that is yes. It will show up, all the uh, subjects that they are enrolled in will show up on their dashboard. You have to make the decision um, if you are um, like a K-8, serving K-8, um, what decision you would want to make as far as turning into elementary or middle school level, um, middle high school um, template, which they are technically used to. Um, we would advise you probably staying with that look that was in the past um, and then just adding in that person into that particular course. Because lots of times you guys, um, especially like our AIG, teachers would not necessarily have a course per se in power school that would push in you would have to create your subjects manually and your courses manually and then add your students in so i hope that answers um, a couple of the questions we did see the other um questions about not being able to see um the elementary side and not being able to see some of the courses and remember if you are not used to as one of those pullout teachers or resource teachers, if you're not used to seeing um, in PowerSchool your data manager push PowerSchool courses to you as the teacher, like you giving grades and checking attendance and things like that, then you're not going to have that on your dashboard in Canvas because technically this collaborates and syncs with Canvas and I mean with PowerSchool and whatever is in there technically filters down into Canvas. So we hope that answered um, some of the questions that you guys had yesterday. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we are going to turn you loose. Have a great day. Have a great open house.